Hey, it's Math Mark. I'm going to show you these numbers. And do they look kind of all the same to you in a way? Do they seem like they're all kind of the same likelihood? I find that this is a problem that a lot of people have, and I'm going to see if I can't smear some of my math knowledge all over you and uh, help you understand how these are different from each other. But I'm going to back way up and let's start with 50%. 50% is a coin flip, one and two. And I think it's useful when we're thinking about these different probabilities to think about the flip side of the number that you're looking at. If something has this probability, what's the probability of the opposite happening? Not because it's different, they all add up to one, but because it can force your brain to think about things in a different way. So keep that in mind as we move through the rest of these numbers. From 50%, let's step up to a different example. 71.4%. So that's a fairly common percentage that you get from political polling or from weather reports or that sort of thing. And our brain has this tendency to look at something like that, 70%, 75%, and think, oh, well, yeah, this is definitely going to happen. But at 71%, there's more than a one in four chance that the other thing is going to happen. So if your brain takes that number, 71.4%, and kind of turns it into 100%, then the actions you take are quite likely going to be wrong, or they at least you've got a great chance of getting caught offside. If you have a 71.4% chance of it being sunny, that means there's a 25% chance of it raining. And so, you know, you might not want to carry an umbrella, but you might want to have an umbrella available. One way of looking at this is to go just a little bit further and going from 71.4% to 75%. So 75%, that's two coin flips. The chance of you flipping two coins and not getting two heads is 75%. Flip it on its head. The chance of you flipping two coins and getting two heads is 25%. Again, that's not that unlikely to happen. So this is why I feel like flipping things up over and looking at probabilities from both sides can help your brain sort of understand what's going on. Going up from 75% to 90%, now you're into something that starts with a nine and our brain really wants to think, oh, nine, that's basically 100%. 90%, that's rolling a D10 and rolling a zero on it. It happens all the time. And one thing to consider when you're thinking about these probabilities is how often does this event occur? Because the more often it occurs, the more likely the unlikely thing is gonna happen and happen a bunch. A great example of this is moving up from 90 to 95%, because 95% is rolling a D20 and getting a natural 20. That's a one in 20 chance. That's a 95% chance when you roll a D20 you're not going to get a critical. But there's a 5% chance that you are gonna get a critical. On Baldur's Gate 1, I actually had to do this whole statistical analysis of the random number generator for that game because people were reporting that it was rolling criticals way too often, but it wasn't. So why did people perceive it as doing this unlikely thing too often? Well, a couple of reasons. One, your brain sees those unlikely things and records them much more loudly, much more permanently than the normal things happening. So if you play and you roll a bunch of dice in a game, you're kind of aware of the natural 20s and the, and the natural ones more than the rest of it, because those ones are special. So it might feel like the percentage is much higher th than it actually is. But the other thing that I think cause this perception on Baldur's Gate is if you're coming from a place of playing pen and paper D&D, &D, 
you're not rolling dice that frequently in time because combat moves fairly slowly, especially second edition D&D, which is what Baldur's Gate is. So now when you've got that all automated and combat is moving way faster, what you're seeing is per minute, criticals are happening way more often than your brain is used to. So you're interpreting that as something's gone wrong with the random number generator. But actually what it is is you're just, you've just increased the frequency of checks massively and that's causing all numbers to occur more often but again you only notice the extremes if we go up to two nines so 99 percent chance anyone who's played XCOM has had the unbelievably heartbreaking moment of taking that 99 percent shot and missing and why does it feel like that happens every single time there's a 1% chance of you missing, of the opposite thing happening. It's happening. You're shooting lots of times in a mission. You're going to miss sometimes. You notice the unlikely thing way more than you notice the likely thing. So it feels like that 99% chance is more like a 75% chance. But it probably isn't. It probably is exactly 99% and it's just your brain playing tricks on you. So instead of XCOM, let me try something else for talking about 99%. If you have a 99% chance of surviving the workday, then on any given day in a city of a million people, 10,000 people are not surviving the workday. With sufficient repetition, with sufficient occurrences of the event, a 1% chance of something happening is going to be happening all the time. And if the consequence of that thing happening are bad enough, then it's going to be very noticeable that 1% of the time this is happening. Now we start to get up into the really likely things. So when you are talking about uptime for various services, they use something called the nines, where they literally just count the number of nines in the likelihood that someone will be able to use a service. So something that is four nines is 99.99% chance of being up, which means that there is a 9,999 out of 10,000 chance that it's going to be working. But that also, to flip it, means there's a one in 10,000 chance that it's not going to be working. And this is where you really need to start thinking about frequency of this event occurring. If you have a server that has a four nines uptime, that means if you have simultaneous players of 100,000, then any time that people are trying to get in, 10 people aren't able to get in. Four nines means that one in 10,000 aren't going to be able to use the service. And if you have 100,000 people trying, that's 10 people that aren't able to use the service. If you go up to six nines, now it's 90, 999,999 out of a million. One in a million chance of it not working. If the probability of your game not deleting someone's hard drive is six nines, and you sell 10 million copies, you're gonna get a lawsuit on your hands because about 10 people are gonna lose their hard drives because your game is going to fail for 10 people. You need to think about the opposite and you need to think about frequency of these things measuring. If we go up to nine nines, so this is a one in a billion chance of failure. If you have a nine nines chance of people not being Superman, that would mean that right now on Earth, there would be somewhere between five and 10 supermen. Even that, given a large enough sample size, not acceptable. If you're Google and you have nine nines on every time I type in a Google search, it returning a proper result. Google handles billions of searches a day. So that's not actually good enough. That means that every day you're failing a fair number of searches. So you actually need to go even past that. I don't know if this is useful and I don't expect MathMark videos are going to be amongst my most well-performing videos, but I thought that maybe it would be useful for me to present some of the things that I do to weigh different probabilities and try to figure out what's acceptable. When you're thinking about probabilities, just because it starts with a nine or a seven, 
doesn't mean that it's guaranteed to happen. There are lots of scenarios under which 90%, 99%, 99.99% .99 are not likely enough for you to accept those probabilities. Think about the situation where this probability is occurring. Think about the opposite. Think about the chance of the opposite occurring. It might help your brain sort of wrap its head around the math. Think about how frequently this event is occurring because that definitely influences how likely you need it to be, if, especially if a failure is really bad. Special thanks to my members. They provide the resources that this channel needs to keep running. If you are interested in becoming a member, there'll be a link down in the description. It really helps the channel out. If you liked MathMark and want me to talk about other various math things and try to present them in a way that maybe people can get their head around, throw a comment down below and let me know what you're interested in because uh, I could probably do that. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up because that will help YouTube know that maybe this needs to be spread to more people. I will see you again soon. Thank you.